I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about, have they really moved on? Well, if you're going through a breakup or some kind of separation, one of the things that you're thinking about and trying to decipher the most is if that person has really moved on for good. Because a lot of times it feels like it. And a lot of times they will tell you something like, that's it, we're done. I'm over this, we're never going to get back together again. Well, I can tell you, just because they say something in the moment doesn't mean that it's always going to stay that way. We are human beings. We are not programmed like robots, like once the program is set, we stick to it. That's just not the way we operate. I mean, think about it. There may have been times in your life where you felt like uh, maybe going to college for one thing and then you change your mind or you wanted to do this and then you change your mind. We're the same way with our relationships. In fact, if you really think about it, there were probably a lot of points during your relationship where you were like, I just don't know if I want to be in this relationship anymore. It may have been for a moment. They may have said something that you didn't like, or maybe they weren't meeting your needs for a day, a week, a month. I mean, there are a lot of different points in a relationship where even just for a few minutes, you might look at that person and think, I can do better than this. I Why am I settling for this? Or I don't like the way they're treating me. Or there's a lot of different things that can go through your mind. And just because right now they don't want to be with you, it doesn't mean it's going to stay like that forever. And I know a lot of the times it feels hopeless. A lot of the times you feel helpless. And I have been there. I completely understand. That is why I'm here to help guide you, okay? I look at all the little signs that are very confusing because a lot of times our exes give us mixed messages. Um, they might uh, tell you that they miss you, but then they don't want to see you when you try and ask them to hang out. Um, they may say things one way and then they're friendly and then the next minute they're cold and they're distant. It can be really confusing, guys. I understand. And I've seen it and I've lived it. So I know that... Um, it can be so scary to just go through this confused and lost and you going to your friends and your family. And believe me, I'm not trying to insult your friends and your family. I'm sure they're wonderful people and I'm glad they're in your life. But when it comes to relationship advice, particularly breakups, do not listen to them, okay? I literally talk to people every single day that tell me what their friends and family are suggesting and it's not going to help. Very, very rarely do I hear any kind of advice that I think would be helpful because it's very counterintuitive. A lot of the things that we have to say and do during a breakup are very counterintuitive. And I understand the psychology behind this stuff and you guys are very anxious, I know. That's why I try and make it clear to you. But there's a lot of underlying things and internal struggles going on within this person and the chances are that they are at some point going to regret breaking up with you and think I shouldn't have done that this was a mistake and your behavior is going to have a huge huge impact on whether or not they decide to uh, move on with their life or they decide to give it another chance with you trust me guys if I knew now the things that I knew or in my relationships years ago, I would have never gone through breakups because I completely understand the dynamics and the shifts and the changes and uh, what a person needs, what a relationship needs, how to communicate your needs. There are a lot of different aspects that you got to consider, okay? So, um, have they really moved on? That's what you're always wondering. Well, you have to look at the little signs. And unless that person has married somebody else and is happy and they're moving on, they're having kids, like, that, yes, in that case, they have moved on and you got to let go. But um, oftentimes, they'll move on for a bit and then they'll revisit the idea 
And if you are the same person that you were when they broke up with you and acting the same way, you're going to chase them away and they'll be done. Trust me. I've seen it. I've lived it. I've made those mistakes. And that's why I'm here for you guys. So um, I've got two good emails for you guys today. And um, both of them are interesting situations. And I think you're really going to like both of these emails. Okay. So I'm going to warn you guys up front. This first one here is from a guy that is from another country. English is not his first language. I'm not going to beat him up like I do with you English speakers. Um, so he says, Hey Craig, first of all, I'm watching your videos for the last month. Learned a lot of things. Thanks a lot. I don't know what people live through life, but I think my story is really bad. My question is about a breakup but my problems are coming from my past. Well, a lot of our problems are coming from our past. And as you guys are starting to learn about attachment trauma and attachment styles and, and these patterns that we've had in communication and um, dealing with our anxiety and all those other things that I teach, you're starting to finally become more and more aware of those things. He says, I am 31 and a student. I took a break from school because I got shot. They fired seven bullets and five of them hit me. So you could, this poor man was shot five times. He says, I couldn't walk for two years and I fought back really hard to overcome this situation and can walk a little by little over the last six months. Great job, man. That's incredibly uh, difficult to overcome. Uh, losing the ability to walk and then having to learn it all over again, man, you, you, should, uh, you should be really proud of yourself. That's outstanding. He says, I didn't do anything bad to get shot. My father and family did bad things in their past. He got into jail. My uncle went to jail. I also tried to stay away from these things and work on my own life. Because I saw the bad side of the stories often. But sometimes you can't walk away from your family's past sins. Someone knocked on the door. I opened it. He started to pull the trigger bullet after bullet. This was in 2014. Cut the relations with the family after the incident. Because I have never wanted this and always stayed away. Anyways... I had this girl in my life back then. I had never gotten serious with her because she always wanted to marry me. I had serious psychological issues because I couldn't walk for a long time and depression, etc., etc. I left her. She chased me for like six or seven months. Then she started dating someone else. Sounds like she finally got tired of chasing you. This time, I started to ch chase her. She blocked me on everything you can imagine. Phone, social media, etc. Well, that would be really painful to go through that. Anyways, two months ago, we had no talk and haven't seen each other in like a year. Mid-July, she sent a message to me from Facebook. We started to chat every day, all day. She works as a manager in a restaurant. She's in her mid-twenties. She told me she wanted to talk to me because her family's having a divorce and felt alone. At the time, she still had this guy in her life. Anyway, we talked every day. Doesn't sound like she was getting much support from whoever she was dating, so she was looking outside the relationship. One night, she was crying on the phone and I couldn't resist myself. Although she told me not to see each other and just talk on the phone, I went to her workplace. I wouldn't have advised that. After two years, we had a coffee together, laughed a little bit, and talked a little bit. When I came back home, she told me she had to go on this battle alone and if we are in our destiny, one day we would come together again. Well, that's important. She told you what she wants and what she needs. And even though you don't like it and it's hard to respect that, 
You kinda have to. I told her, okay, I won't write or come again and cut the communication totally and told her doing this to make her happy. Well, I'm gonna, I can imagine how hard that was for you. One month passed with no contact and last night I emailed her how things are going. How's her mother and father's divorce? Is she happy or not? She wrote me back one day later, told me this. I don't know how I am. I'm sleeping, waking up, going to job, coming back home, every day's the same. I don't know how to get well soon, and days are passing. Thanks for asking. All right, well, it sounds like she's depressed to me. Um, I don't know. I, my guess would be it's a lot more than the parents' divorce, though. When I saw the email, I know from your videos not to act emotional. And first, I wanted to ask you what to do because the things I lived made my emotions like horse crap. <laughs> All right? I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. And currently, I know that she is still with the other guy, but really don't know what to do. All right. Well... It's obvious that she cares about you as a person, and she could possibly see you in the future with her. But, at the same time, she's dating somebody else. You don't have to like it, but you need to respect it. And I don't think you should continue to reach out to her because she's in a relationship. And, let's face it, you want a romantic relationship. You're not wanting just friendship here. And you certainly wouldn't want some guy to be chasing after her if you were with her. So you need to give that relation and her the respect she's asking for. You don't have to like it and it sucks, but it's not going to be right for you to keep chasing after her when she's made it very clear that she doesn't want to have anything with you right now and she has somebody else in her life right now. I don't think she's getting very much from this guy. It's based on what you're telling me. It sounds like he's probably not very emotionally supportive. And at some point, she's probably going to get tired of it and want to look for something more. She knows that you're willing to offer that. And I think if you present yourself as, you know, a confident, secure guy, she's going to be a lot more likely to come back around again. But she's not going to really respect you if you keep coming after her when she says, look, I don't really want you in my life right now. I don't want to see you and I'm with somebody else. She's going to see that as like kind of needy. And it's also like showing that you're settling, right? Like if you're a great catch, you would be out going to find somebody who wants to be with you. And you're not going to put your life on hold for somebody like that. So... I think you just have to kind of let her reach out to you and let her tell you when she's single again. I don't think it'll last very long with this other guy. She sounds like she's not happy in her life and she sounds like she's not getting much emotional support from her partner. So how long is she going to tolerate that? I don't think it'll be too much longer. But you need to work on yourself. It sounds to me like you have a lot of anxiety and depression for yourself and you need to become more secure and confident with yourself. So when she does come around, you are her best option. Okay? So, I have a second email today. And this guy is in his mid-50s. And he dated a woman that's in her late 40s for about six months. Okay? He says, We met at a tennis social night through mutual friends. The attraction was instant. I arranged to play tennis with her, and then we started dating. He tells me a little bit about her family life, and he said, She told me that her mother had a drinking problem when she was young, and I think at one point she and her brother needed to be looked after by someone other than her parents. That is huge, okay? I don't know what age this happened to her at, but if mom had a drinking problem, that would have a massive impact on mom's ability to be there for them, um, to be present with them, to give love and affection. Mom probably had a lot of anxiety, probably depression too, and was not giving her a lot of um, appropriate and healthy kind of love. So my guess is that she probably has serious attachment issues. 
She said she was a bit controlling and would get mad if she and her father were having fun and chatting without her. Wow. So this mom is so controlling that she can't have fun with her own father. If you haven't figured out the attachment style, mom must be avoided. Okay. He said that she was very close to her father. He was a school teacher, so not wealthy, but he managed to buy her a horse, which she loved. He died of a heart attack on the tennis court, so her loss was very sudden. Wow, that is awful. After he died, she ended her marriage and took up tennis. Wow, it's almost like to follow in her father's footsteps, huh? She has one older brother. When I met him, he had a girlfriend, but his ex would hang around with them. That's weird. I went to a party with her and the family, and she came too. I guess the brother's ex, you mean? When I met her, there was an instant attraction. She had told me that she was married young, but her husband was controlling, and that after that, she met someone and got engaged, but that ended when she had an ectopic pregnancy and then discovered that she couldn't get pregnant after lots of fertility treatment. The hormones in the fertility treatment also caused her to get cancer. Wow. So this woman has been through a lot here. We had a great chemistry and during the relationship she told me that she loved me quite early and that she wished she could have had kids with me. During the honeymoon period, she did start a breakup conversation when she thought I wanted more kids, but I convinced her that a 50-year-old guy with two grown kids does not want any more. Well, that probably uh, eased her anxiety over the situation. She was probably afraid that she couldn't give you more and kids, and, and she, she knew she couldn't do that, and she was probably afraid that's what you wanted. She is very quiet and would not talk about the bad times and that she had. And when she told me about the cancer, she quickly brushed it aside. So we, it looks like we have another avoidant in this email. She keeps herself very busy and needs to be doing social things all the time. And I think she was getting frustrated that I was unable to plan things as my financial situation at the time was causing me real problems. She's quiet, but can usually get men to do what she wants as she is very attractive and personable. She will remove herself from a situation and then wait for the person to come to her and then negotiate their surrender based on her ta terms. Oh, wow. Sounds like she's a, a very good businesswoman here. Uh, I don't think I'd want to get into a negotiation with her. She would lose. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. We broke up before Christmas, and I went no contact straight away. Okay, so this breakup was almost eight, nine months ago. After a while, she sent me an email explaining how I was a great guy inside. Oh, inside and out. And how she felt bad that things ended so abruptly and she wanted to be friends. Yeah, we'll be friends, all right. You'll never hear from me, but we'll be the bestest of friends. I won't ever contact you, but we'll be like this together, right? Real close. She contacted me a couple of times after the breakup, but would only meet as friends, so I declined. Well, I would absolutely decline that situation, too. There's no way I'm going to be friends with any ex that I want to be romantically involved with. It's just not going to happen. Um, they need to understand that if we break up and I want to be romantically involved or in, you know, dating, relation, whatever it is, I'm not settling for less. She said that she needs to work on herself before she could have another relationship. That's an excuse. A couple of weeks later, she was in a new relationship. How did I know? I didn't even know that. I haven't. <laughs> I looked at this email probably, I don't know, 
a, a week ago, maybe a little bit less than a week ago. What I do is, when I get emails to share with you guys, I put them off to the side that I'm like, oh, this is interesting, this is a good one. And then I forget about what's in the email. I just know, oh, that was one of the ones I'm going to do. And so I didn't even know that. But there it is, right there, right in front of me. The new relationship was with someone she had been friends with for a couple of years. That smells awful fishy. And from what I can gather, she had no romantic interest in him until we broke up. Doubt it. My guess is that she was having feelings for this guy, and then she broke up with you. Remember what I say, a man never throws away his only pair of shoes. Right? And that goes for women, too. It's just a, it's a saying to, to keep your mind thinking clearly, right? A lot of times people don't end a relationship until they've got someone new lined up because they don't want to be alone. And the more anxiety they have, the more likely they are to do that. She brought him straight away to the tennis club, introduced him as her new boyfriend, which raised a few eyebrows as it was so quick. Yeah. And she was just telling you that she wasn't ready for a relationship. I have seen them a few times at the tennis club, but I just smile or wave and go about my business. That is exactly what I would have done in your situation. He lives two to three hours away from her. Okay, I, I guess I don't know how they knew each other from before, but okay, that's, that's going to be rough. And they see each other on the weekends. I'm still in no contact, but I do smile or wave if I see her and sometimes say hi, but nothing more than that. Well, she's dating somebody else. I'm not going to go out of my way to go over to some girl that just told me she doesn't want to be in a relationship. And now she's dating somebody new and bringing him to the place where I think it's where you work. If it's not, it's where you both go. But I think it's where you work. She said on a few occasions that she didn't feel discon or that she didn't feel connected with me and that we by that I think she mean I wasn't going anywhere. I don't know what that means. The breakup coincided with my startup company being bought by a much bigger software company and I got a good job in the transition. I decided to take the year off from any relationship and work on myself. The new company offered counseling sessions as part of the package. So I went to a counselor to discuss the breakup. I concentrated on improving my tennis and going out with friends. As it wasn't a bad relationship and I have behaved like an adult, I need, to help, I need help in understanding why she felt it necessary to introduce her new boyfriend so quickly into our circle of friends. Well because she probably felt like you guys weren't going to get back together. And so she had no problem bringing them around. She's just like, oh, well, I'm happy with this new person, and I don't see myself getting back with him, so I'm just going to bring them into my life and doesn't really care about how you feel. I need advice on how to interact with her in a way that maintains and raises my value and doesn't make it seem like I have moved on or I am being petty or vindictive in not speaking to her. Okay, well, let's look at this at the end here. All right, so how do you interact with her? Polite. You just be polite with her, just like you've been doing. Wave at her, smile like that. That's what I would do with, with this woman here. But she's dating somebody new. As far as uh, making it seem like you haven't moved on, why would you make it, want to make it seem like you haven't moved on? Then she's going to think, oh, well, I can have him back at any time. I don't want her thinking that she can have me back. I want her to think, oh, I've lost this guy for good. What have I done? I made a mistake. You're, you're going to let her think, oh, great, I've got this new guy. And if it doesn't work out, then I've got you laying around in the background somewhere. I forgot your name. What was it? Name? Ah, it doesn't matter. Nah, man, you don't want to be somebody's backup. Um, and that's part of the reason you don't want to be anybody's friend, okay? Some coaches will tell you to be friends with an ex. I never be friends with an ex. At least any ex that I want to be with romantically. You know what I mean? Somebody that I want to be in a romantic relationship with. I am friends with my exes from 
10 years ago, six years ago, yes, I am friendly with them, and if I saw them or we met somewhere or whatever or something, doesn't I could get along with them great and there wouldn't be a problem. I can be friends with them because there's no longer that kind of attraction or uh, desire to be with them. But as far as if I want to be friends with somebody and I'm not going to settle for friendship, and if you settle for that, you're negotiating for less. Why would you settle for less than what you want? You're going to be unhappy. And I would not do that. I'm not going to settle for less. I'm sorry. And I don't think you guys should either. I, that is why I teach you how to maintain a high value and how to act in a way. And that's why I'm telling you guys, do coaching with me so I could see what's going on. See what you're doing, the little things that you're doing with these interactions or what's going on there to help you figure it out. Because I don't want this person to keep you in the backup in the friend zone you don't want to be there you simply don't want to be there and if you're there you're not going to be happy right how how good is it going to feel being their friend and then they're telling you about somebody new that they're dating that sounds like torture to me all right he says uh he doesn't want to look like he's being petty or vindictive by not speaking to her. Well, you're not looking petty or vindictive. You're just being, you've been polite. And I think you should continue to be polite. And nothing more than polite. Because you want her to know. You've moved on. You're not waiting around for her. You're, you see she's dating somebody new. You're fine. You're great with that. And, you know, if she changes her mind, let her come to you. So... That's it for this video. I think uh, these both gave you a more clear idea on looking at people's behavior if they moved on. And as you can see right now in the second situation, this other woman has moved on and she doesn't even mind bringing this guy right in front of his face, um, which is pretty mean and rude to do. And I wouldn't do that to somebody that I cared about. So if you want to get my help personally, go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching. I do Skype coaching. And if you need to get with me right away, I do offer emergency and after-hours coaching. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.